Hey, in today's video, we get to talk about shelters. I'm going to run you through the shelters that I've tried, what I liked, what I didn't like, and then I'm going to tell you about my favorite shelter, which is, I think, just about as close as you can get to a perfect ultralight shelter. Hi guys, I'm Dan, and I'm here to help you make the transition to ultralight backpacking. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on future episodes. And thanks for watching. And this is my old backpacking tent. This is the MSR Hubba Hubba. It's a two person, three season tent, weighing in at a whopping four and a half pounds. Now, I have to admit I'm a little sentimental about this tent because it did get me through a lot of crazy weather rain and snow and I've even been out in zero degree winter nights with it. And a second thing that I really appreciated about this tent is that it was possible to configure it in the fly and footprint option uh, and that allowed me to get used to sleeping without a bug net. That takes a little while to uh, get used to that and be okay with it and this tent allowed me to find out that that worked and it worked pretty well. Now the MSR company has made some refinements to the Hubba Hubba so that it doesn't weigh quite as much now. So it is worth considering if you really just don't feel like you want to let go of having a freestanding structure. Uh, although there are other companies that you might want to check out, especially Big Agnes makes some pretty good tents that are very light. And Tarp Tent is another great company that makes both freestanding tents and tents that can be pitched just with the trekking poles. So definitely take a look at those. Now <clears throat> this tent gives me an opportunity to explain one concept that you'll run across a lot and that is whether a tent is a single wall or a double wall and uh, that believe it or not this mesh here is considered the first wall and the fly is considered the second wall. Now what that all has to do with is just condensation. So as we sleep, water vapor rises through the skin, but especially through our breath. And whatever is the last layer before the outside air, it condenses against the inside of that. So in this case, the water vapor passes through the mesh and it condenses on the inside of this fly material. Typically, if there's a, enough of it, it will beat up and run off down in, on the ground and so isn't a problem for you. So I knew that moving towards a lighter pack, the first thing that had to go was this big rock. But where to go first? Uh, since I had read Ray Jardine, the obvious answer was that I had to try out a Sil Nylon flat tarp. Now when I was first looking into these, a lot of the cottage companies hadn't really got going yet, or at least I didn't know about them. So the only sill nylon flat tarp I was able to find was in the back pages of the Campmore catalog. And here it is. Now this weighs 20 ounces together with the rigging with all the guy lines, uh, partly because it actually has metal grommets. Now there's so much to criticize in this picture, I don't even want to get started. Uh, but one thing that I did do right here was to pitch the tent in this way rather than in a typical A-frame. The reason that was correct in this situation was this campsite was at a high mountain lake in Glacier National Park in October. And there was a bitter cold wind blowing off the lake. And so by pitching the foot of the shelter flat against the ground, that did a good job of protecting me from that wind and I actually was pretty comfortable this night. The downside was just how exposed I felt in the front. I was really grateful that there wasn't any rain mixed in with that wind swirling around because if there had been, I certainly would have gotten wet. So I knew that the tarp probably wasn't going to work for me and I needed to find a different kind of shelter, but where to start in finding a shelter. Well, there's a website that you're definitely going to want to know about. It's called backpackinglight.com. Now that's a forum where they talk about ultralight backpacking. And there's a search tool that you can plug in any questions that you have and read about all of the responses that been, have been offered already over the years. 
I found that there were very few questions that I had that hadn't been asked by someone already. And so I was able to read and research for probably over a year before I ever felt the need to post a question of my own. Now I do want to take a moment just to express my gratitude to the Backpacking Light community. I really appreciate all of the knowledge and wisdom and encouragement that you have shared over the years. I learned some things from reading books, but I learned way more from reading the forums on Backpacking Light, and I'm very grateful for that. I've recently discovered that there are other groups on the internet that are knowledgeable and willing to share their wisdom, and I want to take a moment also to say thanks to the folks on Reddit for all the support that you have given. Very much appreciate that. Well, when I first started looking into this, I didn't know about any of those other forums. All I knew about was Backpacking Light, so it feels like home to me. So once you do your research and figure out the gear that you are interested in, then you go over to the gear swap section, which is the other great part about Backpacking Light, where you can buy and sell used gear. The gear swap section was my best friend in the process of lightening up my pack. Now there are ways to go ultralight on a budget, and I made links to those references in the description of the first video, but another great way to save money is just by buying used gear and trying it out that way. So when you decide what you think is going to work for you, then you can watch the gear swap section and see if it shows up there. You can even post a wanted to buy uh, and see if someone has it to that they're willing to offer for you. Now, I was able to get probably 60% of my final kit just by buying used on the gear swap, which saved me a lot of money. And it was especially helpful in the whole process of finding a shelter because I certainly didn't score the first time out. So not only are you buying at a significant markdown, but if you try something out and it doesn't work out for you, that's no problem. You just put it back on gear swap at maybe 10 or 20% off sell it and then put that money towards the next shelter or other piece of gear that you want to try. That process worked great for me and the first shelter that I found was none other than the Z-Pax Hexamid. Now as you begin to read about ultralight gear one name that you'll read over and over again is Z-Pax just because they're one of the best companies out there make great gear and it tends to be the lightest that you can find. Now the Hexamid was a really unique shelter, or at least it was at the time that it was made. It's a single wall shelter with the net tent sewn into the fly. So it's very light, only about 17 ounces for complete weather and bug protection. Also it was made with what was then called Cuban fiber. Now they're calling it Dyneema Cos Composite Fabric, or DCF. And that is really the best material for shelters. Uh, just because it's strong and amazingly light. Unfortunately, it's also the most expensive. Now you'll notice from these pictures that the Hexamid is pitched with trekking poles instead of a dedicated tent pole. And that's one of the breakthroughs in concept in shifting to an ultralight shelter is, well, it's actually an idea that is uh, across all ultralight gear is the concept of multiple use. So since you have your trekking poles with you anyway, why not use them to pitch the shelter? So I used this shelter for a whole season. I probably hiked over 200 miles with it and it worked okay for me, but there were a couple of little problems that were nagging over time and uh, became a bigger issue eventually. So the first was just that it was a difficult exit. Uh, you see the rainbow shaped door that comes down quite a ways and I found that when I was backing out of this it whacked me in the back of the head quite often and a second problem was that it actually takes a fairly large footprint because of how far out the guy lines come and so there were times where I wanted to pitch in a rather small space like this one here and uh, the, that was uh, problematic to have the guy lines come out so far. But the biggest issue for me was kind of a vague one, which was that I just didn't find it comfortable. There was something about the way that the floor curved up because it was attached to the fly that made it feel to me kind of like I was sleeping in a hammock. 
And if you watched the first video, I talked about how I like to set out my gear beside my head so I can grab it and in the middle of the night. That didn't work very well with the hexamid because it would just fall over. Now I do want to mention that there are new, newer versions of this. The hexamid has morphed into what is called the duplex now, which is probably one of the most popular shelters out there for ultralight backpackers. And Z-Pax is a really good company, but this hexamid didn't work for me, so I decided it had to go and I sold it. This is a good time for me to take a moment to mention that all of these companies that I'm talking about are really good companies who do excellent work. And every shelter that I decided didn't work for me has hundreds of people who loved it and believe that is the ultimate shelter. Now, if you're one of those people and I'm talking smack about the shelter that you love, please let us know that by making a comment in the section below and that will help other people who are watching this video just to get a more complete picture. And thanks for doing that. So, as I say, I sold the Hexamid and the next tent that I got was from a company called Yama Mountain Gear. Now, I read a comment recently on one of the forums that Yama Mountain Gear is one of the most underrated cottage manufacturers. And I'd have to agree with that. I think they do really fantastic work. Now, the tent that I got was on Gear Swap, and it was the Siriform One Person, which weighs 27.5 ounces. Now, it probably would have been better if I had gotten the two person to get a little bit more room, but the one person was the one that came available, so I grabbed it. And let me tell you, it is tiny, and especially with the bug net inner, I set it up in my backyard and just sat and looked at it and wondered how I was even going to wiggle in that, especially with the pole mounted over in the middle of the front door, as you can see here. It helps a little bit to offset it, uh, but it's just really difficult to get in and out of. So I took it on an overnight trip and uh, it happened to be a hot night and I decided that I wanted to slip off my sleeping socks and I couldn't even sit up to reach my feet to take the socks off. So that was the kicker for me and the Seraform had to go. So I sold that. So the next shelter I got was the Lightheart Gear Solong 6. And I apologize, I don't have a picture to show you of that. However, I will put a link in the description so you can go to the website and get an idea what that looks like. Now, if the Hexamid was a little uncomfortable for me, the Solong 6 felt like a three bedroom apartment. It was so spacious and comfortable. I felt like I could relax, unpack, put some posters on the wall. The Solong 6 is a sil nylon shelter and technically it is considered a 1.5 wall shelter because it has a strip down the middle that's just one layer and then on the sides there's a bug net and then the fly sticks out beyond that so that makes two walls on the sides. It also had a very large vent at the peak and between being able to pitch the fly wide and that peak vent, that's all about trying to mitigate condensation issues. So I set it up in the backyard and thought, this is it, this is the perfect tent for me, and I don't care, at two pounds, it's a little heavy for an ultralight tent, but I'm willing to put up with that if it works for me otherwise. However, when I took it out in the field on a two night trip, I had the first night I woke up in the morning and I had some condensation problems. There was a little puddle above my head, even it, though it had all those features to take care of that. And then on the second morning, I had pitched my tent broadside to a canyon, which was my bad, but in the morning this microburst came out of nowhere and came blowing out of that canyon like a wind tunnel, and that meant I had to jump out of bed and pull in the tent, the fly, and switch to storm mode in the midst of the storm. Uh, and it also seemed like, even though it was 40 mile an hour winds, it seemed like the sides were blowing in a little more than I thought was acceptable. So because of those considerations, I decided the Solong 6 had to go and I sold it. The next shelter that I got, I hit the jackpot. And this is it. This is the Sil Nylon Duo Mid by Mountain Laurel Designs or MLD. 
Now, MLD is one of those top-notch companies that you're really going to want to know about. They make excellent lightweight gear. So this is a pyramid shape, as you can see. Uh, everyone shortens that to call it just a mid. And it is a technically a two-person shelter, although even though two people can fit in there, it gets a little tight for that. But for one person and gear, it's a very spacious shelter. Now mine weighs 22 ounces. Uh, on the website, they list it as 18 and a half ounces. Probably the difference is just due to seam sealing and I've used some different cordage. Also on the website, it's listed as $265, which makes this not only one of the best ultralight shelters that you can get, but it's also a great budget option. Now this provides just bomber protection from the wind and rain and snow everything just slides right off it because of this shape. So I've been in some of the most severe storms that I've ever experienced in this shelter and it's taken really good care of me. As you can see, I have it set up with just a single pole in the middle and it comes with a pole jack, a little six inch jack. It weighs one ounce and that gives you the extra height that you need to pitch it like this. But actually, I prefer to use an inverted V type of pitch with two trekking poles and then that gives me a lot more room in the middle and I don't have to work around that pole. And the way I manage that is I just used an old pair of hiking poles that it had broken and I took the middle section out of that and that gives enough extra height to be able to pitch it in the inverted V shape. These just weigh three ounces for the pair, so that's worked good for me. Now, <clears throat> I like to pitch it with the flap open if it's a nice evening and be able to experience that. Uh, however, if a storm does come up in the middle of the night, it's really easy to just sit up, loosen this toggle, and zip it closed. And then you're good for, the, for a storm without having to go out in the weather to switch to storm mode. As you can see, there's a vent in the peak to help with condensation, but what I found helps the most is just pitching it high like this, and then there's lots of airflow underneath the edges of the shelter, uh, which keeps the condensation to a minimum. I have very little problems with condensation in this, even though it is a single wall shelter. Now you can buy this uh, an inner net to go with this uh, if you want bug protection. And uh, I know that it takes a little bit of getting used to to sleep without that inner net tent. Uh, we tend to think of that as somehow providing some kind of security or safety for us, but really you don't need that. And uh, it takes a little while to get used to this and that's okay to take little steps as I've mentioned it, with other shelters, every shelter that I get, I just set up in the backyard and try it out that way first. And then I'll probably go on a short overnight hike uh, and give that a try and build up slowly. And you can do the same with building your confidence to be able to uh, be okay uh, and feel safe sleeping with just the, the tarp and not the inner tent. But it's okay to take that slow. Now, one of the benefits of living and hiking in the northern Rockies as I do is that the mosquitoes tend to die out towards about the end of July and since the best hiking is in August and September usually I'm able to go with just the tarp and be just fine. Of course when you don't have the inner tent that means you need to have some type of a ground cloth. Now a lot of people like to use polycro which is just a thin plastic film, looks like this. And this works well for some people. It only weighs one and a half ounces, so it's great and lightweight. Uh, for me, I didn't really care for it because it's a little too slippery. I think that it seems like there's no such thing as a truly flat spot out in the woods. And so it, if I set up and sleep on the polycro, it seems like I kind of migrate downhill overnight. Also, uh, the one night I did try sleeping in the polycro, I got a hole in my sleeping mat. So I blame the polycro for that, although it probably had something to do with poor sight selection as well. 
So instead, I like to use this little sheet of Tyvek, which is house wrap, and I've cut that myself to in an inverted V shape, uh, so I have a place to set my gear up beside my head, and that weighs four and a half ounces, so it's not too much more for a lot more protection from the ground. Now, I use this shelter for a whole year in all kinds of weather and totally fell in love with it, but there was one more upgrade that I could do, and this is it. And here we go. This is the Khufu by Locust Gear. It's slightly larger, slightly lighter, but it's basically the same structure as the Duo Mid, except it's in DCF, so it's a lot lighter. Now you can get the Duo Mid in DCF too, uh, and it's pretty much a toss up which one to go with. The only significant difference is that the Khufu has a number three zipper and the Duo Mid has a number five zipper. Uh, so it depends on whether you want to focus on weight or durability. I have to say that I've used this shelter for over two years now and I haven't had any problems with the zipper. So, so far the, that reliability is holding true. Now for a little extra you can get carbon fiber pole jacks and they just weigh two ounces and that allows you to pitch it in that inverted V style that I was talking about with the Duo Mid. And obviously I've pitched it here with the inner net tent. The inner net uh, on this uh, weighs 12 ounces and the tarp itself weighs 11 ounces. So altogether 23 ounces for a double wall shelter with complete protection, that's pretty good. However, as I have said with the dual mid, most of the time I'm able to go with just the net tent. And so 11 ounces and bomber protection, that's pretty hard to beat. And so this is my favorite shelter. But I have to admit that I'm starting to look at some of the tarps and wanting to loop back around to the very beginning and play around with just pitching a, t a flat tarp again. Uh, I guess partly that's just because this whole process of trying out different shelters has been a lot of fun and I don't want it to be over even though this one's going to be hard to beat. So that's my main point is just try to approach this with a sense of fun and exploration and then you can't go wrong. If this video has been helpful then please hit the like button. Next time we'll be talking about sleep systems and I'll do one video to talk about bags and quilts and then a second one to talk about sleeping pads. So you might want to think about subscribing so you don't miss out on that stuff. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.